Number five on this list is the whale fish. This fish is like a legendary Pokemon when it comes to how rare it is. Live Science says the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute released footage in August showing a bright orange female whalefish around 6,600 feet deep offshore of Monterey Bay, California. Very little is known about this bizarre fish because of the three drastically different appearances of the juveniles, which are called tape tails, males, which are called big nose fish, and females, which are called whale fish. The three forms look so different that scientists originally thought that they were three different species. This shape shifting transformation from juvenile to mature females is believed to be one of the most extreme among vertebrates. Whalefish have rarely been seen alive in the deep, so many mysteries remain regarding these remarkable fish. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute tweeted, Let's pull up this image from the Smithsonian that really shows off exactly how weird this fish is. So here we have the three fish, and you can see exactly how different they all are. The Smithsonian says there are other examples of males and females with very different shapes and of animals changing from one shape to another as they grow older. But this is one of the most amazing examples of sexual dimorphism combined with metamorphosis ever found among vertebrates. So we are talking literally about a super rare shape-shifting fish that in my opinion looks creepy as all holy hell. I'd say that you can find this beast at the bottom of the ocean but odds are you won't ever even run into it because of how rare it is. We've been exploring the bottom of our oceans for quite some time now and we are only just starting to learn a little bit about this fish. In all honesty, we really have no idea about it though. Whatever it is or whatever it does, one thing is pretty clear to me though. It's creepy looking, it lives at the bottom of the ocean, and I don't like it. Number four on this list is the goblin shark. This fish has got to be at the top of everyone's lists when it comes to the grossest looking creatures in the world. National Geographic says, Swishing through the deep sea, a goblin shark notices a small, yummy looking squid. The animal inches towards its prey. But as the fish closes in, the snack starts to dart away. So the shark thrusts its jaw three inches out of its mouth. The jaw is connected to three inch long flaps of skin that can unfold from its snout. The predator then grabs the squid in its teeth. After scarfing down the meal, the shark fits its jaw back into its mouth and swims off. That's right guys, a goblin shark's top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments or bands of skin tissue tucked into its mouth. When prey is just out of reach, the shark extends the elastic tissue out of the mouth to nab the grub. This allows the animal to chow down on snacks such as teleost fish and squid. It also makes the shark one jaw-dropping fish. These disgusting looking creatures like to live right at the bottom of the ocean and are native to the oceans around Japan. There are also some of them off of South Africa and in the ocean water surrounding Portugal. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh almost 500 pounds. These aren't monsters, but they may as well be. A 500 pound beast with a detachable jaw that looks like a goblin just chilling at the deepest darkest part of the ocean. I truly cannot think of a whole lot of creatures I would rather run into than this freaking thing. Number three on this list is the proboscis worm. I don't care what anyone says, this has to be a monster. Just based on literally how freaking gross it is, it needs to be qualified as a monster. This species is also known as ribbon worms, and there are actually a ton of ribbon worms in the world. The ones I'm talking about reside deep at the bottom of the ocean. These ones usually grow to be bigger than the other ones in the world. The Smithsonian Magazine says the largest species of ribbon worm is the bootlace worm, which can be found writhing among rocks in the waters of the North Sea. 
Not only is it the largest Nemertian, but it may also be the longest animal on the planet. Uncertainty remains because these stretchy worms are difficult to accurately measure, but they have been found at lengths of over 30 meters and are believed to even grow as long as 60 meters longer than the blue whale. Despite their length, they are less than an inch around. Now these creatures don't have any natural predators and let me tell you why. Because they look disgusting. Like, let me ask you guys, would you want to eat that? I would straight up need to be starving and there would literally need to be nothing edible left on the planet other than this thing before I decide to take a bite. It literally looks like a large intestine that just slithers across the bottom of the ocean. Shockingly enough, this is a real thing though and you can find it chilling in deep waters. Number two on this list is zombie worms. We aren't quite done with the worm talk yet guys because now we have got to look at zombie worms. Zombies are a pretty terrifying monster, so are these just like them? The Smithsonian says zombie worms don't crave brains, instead they seek bones. The 1 to 3 inch Ostax worms were first discovered in the bones of a rotting gray whale on the deep sea floor nearly 10,000 feet deep in 2002. Since then, more Osidex species have been discovered. There are 26 according to the World Register of Marine Species. Zombie worms don't eat mineral bones directly, instead they digest fats within the bone. However, their style of eating is quite different from ours because they don't have a mouth or a stomach. They secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves bone, freeing up the fat and protein trapped inside. Then, symbiotic bacteria living in the worm's body digests the fat and protein. How Osidax acquire nutrients from the bacteria isn't known. They may simply digest the bacteria or nutrients are somehow transferred to the worm. They hold on to whatever bones they can find by drilling in with roots which contain the symbiotic bacteria. Zombie worms can retract these plumes into the body when they are disturbed. If all this isn't strange enough, the only worms doing any drilling are female. The microscopic males live inside their bodies. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. This eliminates the pesky step of having to search for a mate because the eggs and sperm are right next to each other. Then the worms can disperse many fertilized eggs far and wide, hoping that they land near some recently fallen bones. Needless to say, but these are some weird freaking creatures. No wonder we've nicknamed them zombie worms. They're about as monstrous as you could possibly get. Not to mention, but they feast on the bodies and bones of the dead, similarly to what zombies would want to be doing. Number one on this list is the Sloan's Viperfish. As with most things on this list, we have a thoroughly disgusting looking creature. This thing is just as dangerous as it is disgusting though. The Twilight Zone says, like many of the inhabitants of the deep sea, Sloan's viperfish sport light producing organs called photophores along its body. These flashing blue, green, or yellow lights might attract tasty snacks, but they're most useful for masking the fish's silhouette from predators below. They're also useful for grabbing a meal. When prey comes near, the viper fish drops a glowing light on its dorsal fin ray like a fishing lure in front of its mouth and snap. A muscular jaw filled with clear, sharp teeth comes crashing down like a guillotine. Lucky for the viper fish, its first vertebrae has evolved to act as a shock absorber for that powerful bite. This is the deep sea version of a piranha, except way more deadly. If you were getting attacked by piranhas, there would likely need to be multiple of them to attack you to actually win. I could totally see a world though where you lose one on one versus this thing though. Its teeth would literally dig so deep in your body. Even at the thickest part of your body, this thing has the potential to go all the way through if it bites you well enough. Thank goodness it's swimming thousands of meters below us and we don't need to worry about it popping up on our next snorkeling adventure. Number five on this list is the Loch Ness Monster. Nessie, as many people refer to this creature, is said to be a huge, long-necked, almost dinosaur-looking creature that lives in Scotland. This creature of the deep specifically resides in Loch Ness, a 37-kilometer loch located in the Scottish Highlands. 
The legend of this sea creature went worldwide back in 1933. A photo was released to the public showing a strange creature's head protruding from the water of Loch Ness. The world went into a frenzy after that photo got out and the legend of Nessie began. Ever since that point, many sightings have been reported, other pictures have been taken, and even sonar readings have indicated this creature swimming in the loch. All of that being said though, we've never had indisputable proof that Nessie's real. Well, I'm here to tell you that Nessie is real, but maybe not how you expect. New Zealand scientists have taken samples of the water in Loch Ness and have studied the DNA that they found in it. Professor Neil Gamel, a geneticist, is quoted saying, well, our data doesn't reveal their size, but the sheer quantity of the material that says we can't discount the possibility that there may be giant eels in Loch Ness. Therefore, we can't discount the possibility that what people see and believe is the Loch Ness Monster might be a giant eel. So, the Loch Ness Monster, as we understand it, might not be real, but potentially this loch is full of giant eels that resemble all the features that Nessie's reported as having. Maybe this is why we've had such a hard time proving this myth, because for years, people have been looking for the wrong thing. I really like the legend of the Loch Ness Monster and honestly want it to be true, but if it had to be giant eels, then I think I could accept that as well. Number four on this list is the USS Stein Monster. The USS Stein was a Knox-class destroyer ship in the United States Navy. The ship was eventually decommissioned from the American Navy and was transferred to the Mexican Navy in the 90s. That wasn't before it was attacked by a massive sea monster though. In 1978, the USS Stein was attacked by an unknown entity which we now refer to as the USS Stein Monster. This monster was said to have been a giant, with some people estimating its size up to 150 feet in length. The ship was sailing in the Pacific Ocean when it was attacked. Technical difficulties with the ship started going wrong and eventually they brought it back into the port. Upon inspection, the sonar system was completely damaged. There were cuts and gashes over 8% of the ship, with some of them being massively deep. They also found suction cups like those of a squid attached to the ship. After investigation of the suction cups and the gashes, it became clear that what they were attacked by isn't your standard animal. Even a giant squid would have had a hard time doing what the monster did to the ship. Ever since that point, the legend of the USS Stein monster has grown. Obviously, this monster has to be real because it has actually attacked a ship. Sadly, we don't know a whole lot about it though. In truth, we know less about what's on the ocean floor than we do about the surface of the moon. So it's very possible that a creature we aren't familiar with yet is dwelling down there. Number three on this list is Megalodon. Would this list really be complete if I didn't include the ancient king of the sea? Eleanor Imster writes, Scientists think that Megalodon looked like a stockier version of the great white shark, with strong, thick teeth built for grabbing prey and breaking bones. Regarded as one of the largest and most powerful predators who have ever lived, fossil remains of Megalodon suggest that this giant shark reached a length of about 60 feet. Their large jaws could exert a bite force up to 24,000 to 41,000 pounds. That is a massive, massive animal, guys. Multiple times bigger than the great white sharks we have today. This thing was so big that it would actually eat entire whales. Now, many myths have surrounded Megalodon and its existence since scientists first brought this mammoth of the sea up. Estimates say that Megalodon went extinct roughly 2.6 million years ago, but some people don't buy into that theory. For quite a while now, the legend of a giant shark still living amongst the ocean has had a lot of people wondering if it's possible. If Megalodon was still alive, is it possible that we still wouldn't know about it? How could we miss a creature this giant? How many of them would there be left in the waters? There are surely a lot of questions that come up if you believe Megalodon is still a reality. If this creature was still alive, then people think the Marianas Trench is where it's located, a place so deep and uncharted that it's hard for us to know for sure what's down there. I'm personally not convinced this creature still roams the ocean, but comment down below your thoughts. Is Megalodon still alive? What do you think? Number two on this list is the Kraken. The Kraken is one of the largest sea monsters that is said to exist. It all started in Nordic folklore many hundreds of years ago when sailors told tale of a massive beast that preys upon the waters of Norway, Greenland, and Iceland. This fearsome beast was said to pull entire ships to their doom and eat every human on board. The first account of the legend was in 1180 by the King of Norway at the time. Since then, sightings of the creature and lore surrounding its capabilities have grown through the years. Fiction writers and movie makers have also latched onto this creature and included it in many stories. As cool as it would be though, to our current knowledge, 
The crack in itself isn't real. However, something similar to it definitely is. The giant squid. The giant squid is a massive squid that's said to be able to grow up to 13 meters in length. Sightings have even put this creature at 20 meters before, but those have never been proven. Even if 13 meters is the maximum length, that's still a large animal and something that would frighten anyone if you're seeing it for the first time. Many experts believe that the legend of the Kraken happened when Norwegian sailors stumbled upon this giant squid, and rather than name it a giant squid, they called it the Kraken. As time went on, the legend spiraled out of control until we got this massive sea monster which attacks boats. Now even though that might be a bit far from the truth, could I believe that there was one giant squid that was potentially bigger than the rest? Absolutely I could. I could also believe that this giant squid might have attacked a ship or two in its time and maybe even brought one down. If it did do all of that, then there really wouldn't be any difference between this squid and the kraken. Either way, if you see a massive sea creature with tentacles coming after you, I'd just swim the opposite direction. Number one on this list is the Hook Island Sea Monster. It was first spotted by Robert Le Sarek in 1964 off of Hook Island and after he saw the monster, he went on to describe it in detail. He said, it was only when we got to within 20 feet of the serpent that we could see its head clearly. The head was large, about 4 feet from top to bottom with jaws about 4 feet wide. The lower jaw was flat like that of a sandfish. The skin was smooth but rather dull, brownish black in color. The eyes seemed pale green, almost white. The skin looked more like that of a shark than an eel. There were no apparent scales nor did we see any parasites around. We supposed the flexible tail would have shaken any off. There were no fins or spines, nor were there any apparent breathing openings, although there must have been some. Perhaps we didn't see them because our attention was focused mainly on the creature's menacing mouth, the inside of which was whitish. The teeth appeared to be small. A fragment of some dark substance hung from the upper row of teeth, possibly a fish. As the monster was lying on the sandy bottom, we could not see the color of its belly. The creature was about 90 feet long. Behind the head, the body was about 2 feet 4 inches thick and remained that way for about 25 feet. Then it gradually tapered into a whip-like tail. The general color of the body was black with 1 foot wide brownish rings every 5 feet the first starting just behind the head. The skin was smooth but dull. So that's his description and after he and his family saw it, he took some pictures of the creature to prove his claims. We have to remember that these pictures were taken in 1964 and doctoring them would have been far more difficult back then than it is today. I also tend to believe this claim more than most based on the level of detail he described the beast. Obviously it was a pretty jarring experience if he was able to describe the creature in that much detail. Since the claims, people have researched Hook Island for this monster, but with no luck. Hopefully one day we can spot this monster again and know for certain that it truly exists. Number 5. Oarfish Coming in at the number 5 spot is this terrifying 16 foot long monstrosity hauled out of the ocean by Chilean fishermen. Shocking those who learned, like me, that fish can be 5 meters long sometimes. The clip was posted to TikTok where it went viral almost immediately, sweeping up 10 million views pretty quickly. Most people worried this fish might be a bringer of bad times, and there might be an inkling of truth to that. This fish, called an oarfish, is thought in some cultures to be an omen of impending bad fortune. I mean, I understand it completely. If, if I picked this thing out of the water, I would not think that I had been blessed by good fortune. In Japanese folklore, this fish is sometimes referred to as Ryogo no Tsukai, translating to the messenger from the sea god's palace, and I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation, I'm so very sorry. It's linked to the legend of Namazu, a giant sea snake which caused earthquakes whenever it would rise. Or fish live deep, deep, deep in the depths of the sea. And some scientists theorize that they only ever rise nearer to surface level whenever there's a disturbance in the tectonic plates, which would definitely make this fish a bad omen and a bringer of earthquakes. Now the actual ore fish, once you get aside all the legend, terrifying as it might look, is a bit of a gentle giant. It's the largest bony fish in the world, and it isn't much of a predator, preferring to swim around just hoovering up plankton. They barely even have teeth, to be honest, and they don't really pose a threat to humans. Unless you consider scaring the heck out of you a threat. You want to watch more scary sea creature videos? Well, I got great news for you because we have loads upon loads on the channel. Number 4. Green-Eyed Shark Now, if the ocean is where all the scariest stuff in the world is hiding, that goes triple for any body of water around Australia, which is home to some of the actual most terrifying entities 
ever to walk the planet and swim the planet and fly the planet. It's where they send the animals that are too hardcore for the rest of the world. An Australian angler, Trapman Bermagee, pulled out this disgusting wretch of a fish some 2,000 feet beneath the sea. He captioned it, the face of a deep sea rough skinned shark. A uh, little bit of a fake Australian accent there, I, I can't help it. Unsurprisingly, most commenters wanted to point out how disgusting the thing was, which is very similar to what I'm doing now. And usually I'm a sucker for green eyes, but not on this leathery little monster. This thing looks like a baseball glove that came to life. I, I'm not having it. There's actually a lot of debate as to what this little thing is. Some commenters had suggested that it was a cookie cutter shark, which might sound adorable when you hear that, that sounds pretty cute, but I promise you it is not cute at all. A cookie cutter shark is named that because of its jagged mouth, which leaves cookie cutter like imprints on its victims, just like big holes in anything that it's biting at. However, the fisherman pointed out this wasn't a cookie cutter shark. A cookie cutter shark looks absolutely vile, but in a very different way. A cookie cutter shark looks more like a mole rat that was left in the sun for a few weeks, whereas this thing looks like it was grilled before ever being born. Now, another commenter suggested that this shark could be something called an Endeavor Spur Dog Shark, which is a mouthful and a half. Now, whatever the creature is, it goes without saying, I want very little to do with this shark. Number three, long-nosed chimera. You wouldn't really expect anything horrifying to exist in Newfoundland. It's a very pleasant place. You think it's mostly just chips and jigs dinner all the way down. Well, for Gary Goodyear, a fisherman out of Templeman, Newfoundland, he pulled this long-nosed chimera out of the water and gave himself quite the shock. His nets went some 2,000 feet down into the water where he unearthed this long beaked mystery fish. When he pulled it up, the crew could not believe what they had seen. It was not at all what they were expecting. I have to include this quote from one of the articles because it's just, it's too new fee not to include. Goodyear said, We're hauling away and by and by I seen this coming around the roller. I said, good God, what in the heck is that? Now when he first pulled it up, he wondered at first if it might have been a platypus because of the impressive snoot on the beast. He described this pelagic nightmare's beak as being very rubbery, like cartilage. No one on the boat had any idea what they had found, so they kept the body of the fish and took it to a local fishery in the hopes that someone could properly ID their mystery monster. Luckily, somebody actually knew and it got correctly identified as a long-nosed chimera, an ancient deep sea dwelling fish famous for its green eyes and, putting this gently, its monstrous appearance. The reason that its nose felt like cartilage is because the fish is completely cartilage from nose to tail. It's actually boneless. So this fish is a spineless coward. The creature most likely perished as it was being pulled up. An extreme pressure change from being 2,000 feet beneath the sea gave it a serious case of the bends. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise because I'm not sure I'd want to see this thing alive. I'm not sure I'd want to see it thrashing around on the floor of a commercial fishing boat. I think that wouldn't be good for anybody. Number two, decorator crab. Our next spot comes to us all the way from Thailand. Some local fishermen in Koh Yao Noi pulled up their nets while fishing for crabs and discovered they'd brought up an alien looking creature with them that mystified them. They couldn't identify this thing. Take a look at this creepy little crawly. Kind of looks like a spider that's got a good fashion sense, got really into accessorizing. But it almost kind of looks like it shouldn't be moving at all. Like it's just some garbage that got cursed into being alive or maybe some seaweed that developed sentience. The fishermen were understandably pretty puzzled by this thing. So they decided to post a video of the then unidentified critter hoping to get some answers, and for once, the internet was actually helpful. The creature was correctly identified as a decorator crab, which is not something I'd heard of before this video, but I am so glad I learned about it, and I am even happier that I can pass it on to you. A decorator crab gets its name for its habit of using whatever it can scavenge around its environment to make into camouflage from predators. Now, the really cool thing is that they'll use literally anything they can find. Debris, garbage, They'll even use little bits of other animals in a gruesome manner, like fins or parts of a crab shell. If it can be attached to it in some way, a decorator crab will stick it to itself. They're covered in tiny Velcro-like hairs that allow them to attach their findings easily. I, I would love having that. It would save me so much time getting dressed. They've been recorded chewing on things like kelp or seaweed to break them down into more easily attachable accessories. Now, most of the creatures on this list have been weird and scary and kind of look horrifying, and I'm not gonna lie, the decorator crab kind of looks pretty scary too, but I absolutely adore the decorator crab. It is showing up every other creature in the ocean when it comes to outfits. I love the garbage costume. It's given camp in a very good way. 
This thing is like a crab Lady Gaga and I love it. Number 1. Ghost Shark Roman Fedortsov routinely entertains his 600,000 Instagram followers with pictures of all the strange creatures he fishes up while sailing around Murmansk, a port city in Russia. His Instagram is a treasure trove of scary undersea finds and I absolutely recommend that you toss him a follow if you're into this sort of thing as he's kind of the head honcho for it. This video could easily just have been 5 things that he fished out himself. He, like, nobody is pulling out weird things the way Roman is. But with so many to choose from I had a tough time but I landed on this here fish sometimes called Frankenstein's fish. Due to the stitches all over its body looking like it's been sewn together from the bodies of several other fishes. It's also been referred to as a rat fish, a ghost shark, a spook fish, but officially they're known as ghost chimeras. I like that it's got nothing but scary nicknames. These things are bad news from teeth to tail. They have a spiny dorsal fin that's poisonous to the touch. It's got a mouth of rat like teeth that helps it grind down anything it catches, crushing its prey in its jaws. Usually goes after things like crabs or prawns so the rat teeth help pulverize the shells. These little things also have an inherent ability to detect the electric fields produced by other creatures and I wish I knew even the littlest bit about biology because this fish sounds like it's magic. Fish also sounds overpowered, not gonna lie. Now I think it's a little treat. We ought to have a little slideshow at the end of just a bunch of Fedortsov's weirdest catches and I'll just react to them. Ready? Okay, here we go. Lightning round. Who would make this? Why would a creature evolve like this? I guarantee you this thing looks cuter as sashimi. That, that is a face not even mother nature could love. If that even is a face. You know what this one? I'm actually kind of coming around to. I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't order it, but I kind of like it. Number five, Scarborough Beach. Apparently this thing was caught like last month, so it really does exist. All right, that's it. I guess uh, we can go home. Call it a day. No seriously, it really does exist. When we think of the Kraken, I always picture like this 40 foot Lovecraftian monster climbing up pirate ships, cracking it in half in the 1940s. Well, they actually look more like this. Yeah. The Architeuthis ducks, or the giant squid. Scarborough Beach in South Africa just swashbuckled this thing long enough to get a picture. Have you ever seen a picture of a Kraken? Because I haven't either. Because these things are apparently so rare to see. This thing fights sperm whales. Yeah, out of the water they just look like a bunch of pool noodles and wet crinoline. But under the water, these things grow up to like a hundred feet. It's like a ten story building. Like of tentacles. The giant squid is the longest cephalopod out there. That's the class of mollusks that include squid, cuttlefish, and octopus. While there have been many claims of these ocean giants achieving lengths of 100 feet, the suckers on the giant squid's tentacles and arms measure to about your hand in diameter. Yeah, these suckers are lined with sharp serrated ring teeth too. All that plus suction, just just holding on to ya. No wonder they kill sperm whales, scar them up all joker style, just rear naked choking them down into the twilight zone. Cap out. Cap out! Number four, origins. We're going back to the origin story, the prequel if you may. So who really was the first person unfortunately lucky enough to see this thing crawl up their ship and start swallowing people? The Kraken has been around for a while, right? Aristotle talked about large squids in Historia Animalium, while Pliny the Elder also described a huge squid with arms measuring more than 9 meters in length. Tales of gargantuan sea monsters have been common for centuries across Europe as well. And then of course, they're there for the Norse legends of the ferocious Kraken. The king of Norway, Sverre Sigurdsson, was the king from 1184-1202 of Norway. Sigurdsson believed a monster in the shape of a giant squid stalked the water around Norway, Iceland, and Greenland, just terrorizing sailors, dragging them down. Mentions of the Kraken can also be found once again in 1250 in a Norwegian text known as the King's Mirror. Here the narrator discusses all sorts of creatures found including mermaids and mermen, and of course, the Kraken. Back then it was called Hafgufa. I tried. A monster so big that it could swallow up an entire ship. The Hafguva. The term Kraken was actually first used by Danish author Erik Pontopoden in his works The Natural History of Norway, 1755. Quote, a great tentacled monster that would surface and attack ships at sea and then subsequently cause whirlpools and disappear. Then in 1857, Danish zoologist Japtus Steenstrup compiled stories of washed up animals and one particularly large squid that lurked amongst the ocean. He named it the Architeuthis ducks, or the giant squid. Number three, Medusa. 
In 2004, the first giant squid was photographed while still alive. Zoologist Dr. Tsunami Kobadera and whale watcher Kiyochi Mori went looking for sperm whales off of Ogasawara Island south of Japan. They dropped a baited line on a camera to about 900 meters and snapped a selfie. A few years later, in 2012, scientists hit the jackpot. Kubadera once again traveled back to Japan now with deep sea explorer Edith Witter and Dr. Steve O'Shea armed with their secret weapon, Medusa. A special camera rig with a very clever name. Medusa uses a low light strobe system to avoid scaring the squid away. No boats, no motors, no loud noises, no submarines. Nice and quiet. They dropped Medusa to about 700 meters and captured a massive giant squid for the very first time in history. Basically, a camera with a float with like 200 feet of line carried through the current. Then they went down. They went down in the Triton, a two person submarine, and baited this thing out of the deep darkness with a bat squid and a strobe light. This thing was more than two stories big. Quote from Edith We've only explored about 5% of the ocean. There are great discoveries yet to be made down there. Fantastic creatures representing millions of years of evolution and bioactive compounds that could benefit us in ways we haven't even imagined yet. We need a NASA like organization for ocean exploration. Mind blown. 100%. Look, I'm the alien guy, Edith, and I couldn't agree with you more. Let's get some money going, get down there. Start snapping some pictures, see what's lurking. Number two, octopuses. And now we head on up to Canada, of course, to the west. The best place for UFOs, Bigfoots, and now apparently, Krakens. A British Columbia photographer was apparently walking a Vancouver Island beach with her dog when she discovered a large, quote, orange blob. Just a couple of months ago, quote, the little suction cups were even bigger than a toonie. Not quite the size of my palm, but they were big. She said the head was two feet alone. The creature is the Enoroctopus doflaney, aka the giant Pacific octopus, the largest octopus species on Earth. Okay, squids, octopuses, they're both cephalopods. Could the infamous beast just be one of those? Last month, another huge guy was found in Newport, Oregon. That sounds like the start of a joke, doesn't it? An octopus washes up in Newport, Oregon. I don't know, just the words there. Three fishermen found this giant clinging to their crab fishing basket. Yeah, imagine that, just like holding on. Talking like 600 pounds here, people. 30, 40 feet. That thing could climb aboard and snap a little dinghy, no problem. Okay. Maybe this thing really was out there snapping boats in half. Like they can both unscrew lids and escape bottles. They have brains and nervous systems. Dude, I'm only doing land from now on. I can't go in space, I can't go swimming. Like what's happening here? And number one, Smithsonian. The number one spot, of course, the Smithsonian. Okay, so you can actually go and actually see this actual legendary Leviathan. Well, apparently at any of those places I just mentioned, but at least at the leisure of your own time and safety, here. Nowhere near water or the twilight zone. For just a couple of bucks, you can see the Kraken at a couple of places now. The big rare ones are all at the Smithsonian Natural Museum of Natural History, and there's only two. A zoologist named Dr. Clyde Roper has spent his life learning about the Kraken. He's discovered new cephalopod species, published more than 150 scientific papers, and now helps underwater himself swimming around in a submarine looking for more. There are about a dozen giant squids on display in museums around the world. But at the Smithsonian, this female and male, the female female obviously being bigger in its case, was caught by two fishermen's nets off the coast of Spain in 2005. 40 feet in length, 20 feet tentacles, the oldest one to date is about 300 million years old at the Royal Ontario Museum of course. Suction cups still on this rock and all. I guess for now all we can do to help out is recycle, keep that shit out of the oceans, you know? Sit on Google Earth all day, refresh, scan the seven seas. I guess that's about it. 